and welcome to the Art of Decluttering podcast. I am your host, Amy Ravel, and it is lovely to be in your ears today. We're starting to get ready for school and kinder and childcare going back, whether you've got kids that are three and four or whether they're 17 and 18, they still require some things that kind of they're not going to think of themselves, let's be honest. And so it is important that we kind of as a family or as a parent or as a carer, give thought to some things like today, we're going to talk about drink bottles. Now you might be thinking, how in the world is this lovely declutterer going to talk to me for 15 minutes about drink bottles? And in my mind, I'm thinking, how am I going to fit it all in, in that time? Because there is so much to talk about around drink bottles. When I go to people's houses, we're forever getting rid of moldy drink bottles, drink bottles with broken parts, drink bottles that are missing parts. And so I think there's some really great tips and tricks that I can give you today so that when you head into the school year or the the kinder year or the childcare year, or even if it's you as an adult and you are a person that carries around a drink bottle like I am, um, there are certainly some tips and tricks that will help you to not lose it, not have to replace them all the time. So one of the things that you will have noticed over the course of this year so far is a lot of the first steps when it comes to decluttering a specific category. So this doesn't necessarily work if you're doing like a massive garage or a master bedroom because you can't gather one particular item. But when we're doing a deep dive into an area that's quite specific like drink bottles, the first step is always going to be gather. And what you want to do is you want to gather all of the drink bottles. Now, there are probably going to be some in school bags, in sports bags. There may be some in the back seat of the car, in the footwell of the car. There's probably some in yours or your children's bedrooms. I do suggest you check under the bed because most of the time one has rolled under the bed and then a second one has been placed on the bedside table. You might want to check your handbag or a backpack or a nappy bag, anywhere that you would be using a drink bottle. Uh, It might be a desk or something like that as well. And then I want you to go into the kitchen and grab all of the drink bottles, the drink bottle parts, and bring it all together. Kitchen table is always great for this. I quite often will sit on the floor in the kitchen when I'm helping a client to go through their drink bottles because what you want to do is once you've got them all together, is you want to try and match them up. So what do I have that matches? What do I have that doesn't match? Because once you've gathered then you're going to kind of think, well, how many drink bottles does one human actually need? And what type of drink bottle are we going to do? And how do we know which ones we're going to get rid of? So we're going to go through all of that in today's episode. First step is really to kind of declutter the ones that you're, you just don't need to make another decision about. So if you've got a drink bottle whose mouthpiece or the actual container itself has mold on it, I would just let that one go. That one served a great life. It has hydrated your child or yourself well. It's done exactly what it was meant to do and it's time to let it go. Having a drink bottle with mold on it is not a great idea to be putting in your mouth and consuming that mold. The next thing you want to do also is get rid of the drink bottles that have missing parts. When the kids were little, we had these drink bottles that had straws and the like the inbuilt straws, so they kind of flipped out, but you could pull the straws out and replace them if you wanted to. I've never replaced a straw on a drink bottle in my life. And I'm pretty sure that most of you haven't either, because if the straw gets a break in it, which if it's silicon, eventually it will, nobody replaces it. We all just get rid of the drink bottle or we keep the base and we think, oh yeah, we'll get a replacement top at some stage. Let's be honest, if you don't do that, if you're not that type of person, let the whole drink bottle go rather than keeping just the parts that aren't broken. If you are the type of person that does replace, like, I hope that wasn't too loud clapping in your ear, but I'm so impressed if that is you. You want to declutter drink bottles whose lids don't fully close, whose lids you can't find, whose Uh, Drink bottles are just too big to fit in the side pocket of the school bag. There are so many things that make a drink bottle like end up in the bin. And so this is a really great opportunity before the year starts to go through and do that curation of, I'm just going to get rid of all the drink bottles that are manky and we're not going to use anymore. You know, you want to think about things like, can my child actually unscrew the top if they need to refill it? Or if, they've, if it's not a pop top one that actually they can drink with the lid on, if it's a screw top, could they do that? Are their fine motor skills developed enough that they can 
absolutely without having to find a friend or a teacher, take the lid off and put it back on? Or is there a drink bottle that gives them more independence that you could find? The next question I will often ask, because this is an important um, proviso for me, is I need drink bottles that are easy to clean. I do not want drink bottles in our life that require me to have a particular little bottle brush that I have to use that one and I can't get to the bottom and the lid's really tricky. For me, it has to be really easy to clean. So can it go in the dishwasher? That's a really important question for me when I'm deciding what drink bottles are staying and what are going. Does the drink bottle have multiple pieces where if you lose one tiny little piece, the whole drink bottle can't be used? Right. So if that would help you decide what type of drink bottles you want to keep or, or get rid of. You want to ask yourself, like, how many drink bottles do we actually need? Now, I'm not giving you the number. Um, I would say I probably have four drink bottles myself that are on the go at any one time. There's usually one in my handbag, two on my desk, and one on my bedside table. And I use all of those almost every day. But for some people, having just one drink bottle is absolutely enough because you can just have that with you and you just fill it up and reuse it and it's good quality, easy to drink from, easy to clean. But have a think, how many drink bottles do you need? And similar to when we were talking in the glasses episode, if you have too many drink bottles, is it actually harder to keep track of them than if you just had a few? Particularly for kids, if they kind of have to keep the location of three drink bottles, for instance, in their minds or keep track of them, is that going to be a lot harder than just one drink bottle that goes everywhere with them? So there's some questions to help you decide what you're going to declutter what kind of bottles you want in your family. Let's take a super quick break and I'll be back to talk to you about some organising ideas and some ways to hack having drink bottles that don't go missing. See you in a minute. So I'm going to go back to the question of how many drink bottles do you need? When the kids are able to kind of take responsibility for their own drink bottle, and whether it's going to childcare, kinder, school, uni, whatever it is, they can actually like bring it in, put it in the sink, have it washed, fill it up, take it with them. You might want to just let them pick how many drink bottles they'd like and make them the same. So here, this is my like biggest parenting tip around drink bottles. Just pick a type of bottle and everybody gets the same type. So you might choose to have different colours Um, So one child might have red and one has green and one has blue. But by having the same type of bottle, when one person loses a lid and the other person loses a base, you can match them together. And I found that to be really helpful. We do the same with socks. (laughs) So if you lose the left sock but you still have the right sock and you lose the right sock of another one, you can match them together. And I think that's really great when it comes to drink bottles. For me, all my drink bottles are exactly the same brand. And I don't care if it looks silly to have four of the same because I know that it makes it nice and easy. I know that it fits in my handbag. I know that it's easy to swap the lids out if I need to. So that's a that's a tip for me um, that I have found really helpful. You may have some kids that prefer different things, but try and go as uniform as possible because when you've got 15 different types of drink bottles with all different types of lids, it can be quite an effort to match them. And when you're in a rush and you're ready to leave and go to the beach and everybody has to get a drink bottle and you're searching for the right lid for the right bottle, you're going to be cursing and thinking, oh, I wish I did what Amy had suggested. One of the tricks that I have implemented in heaps and heaps of homes is that you keep your drink bottles together in the kitchen, um, in a drawer or in a cupboard, whatever works best for you. But I would say get a container or a tub where they can live. So the beauty of that is if you um, are washing a drink bottle and it's, say, out of rotation or it's not being used or it's in excess or whatever, when you wash it and you let it dry, sometimes there's still a little bit of water in drink bottles. You know how they've got funny curves and then they've got the mouth of it and it can be hard to get all the water out. And so one of the tricks that you can do is to store them without their lids on because that gives them opportunity for airflow and to dry out and that they won't go moldy or start to smell because the water's gone a bit funny in them when they're not in use. And so by having a tub where you can put all of the bottles and all of the lids and all of the accessories, the straws and whatever it is that go with your drink bottles, that will make it much easier when it is time to grab them to know that the lids 
and the bottles are being kept in the same place. If you um, have kids that, as I said, are really uh, let's let's call them forgetful kids or energetic kids or kids that will lose things. I've got one child that never loses anything and one that does. <laughs> and so if you've got drink bottles that are the same, it becomes familiar for them to look out for that in the classroom or in the playground or wherever they are, rather than having three or four different types of drink bottles and they've got to remember where they are to what bottle to look out for. But another thing to remember when they're at school is regardless of whether they've got the same drink bottles or different is label the drink bottles. Put a, a sticky label on, write their name on it, write it on with Sharpie, scratch it into the plastic, whatever you have to do so that it's really clear who the drink bottle belongs to. That will make it so much easier when they lose it and a teacher can pull it out of lost property and know exactly where it belongs or it gets lost at the park and two people pick up the same drink bottle and you're like, ah, mine's got my name on it, just to make it that little bit easier. I'm really hoping that this January series is making life simpler in the areas that you can. Like how do we hack drink bottles so that you're not always running around trying to find that particular lid for that particular base for that particular child? How do we make it easy? And I think having a container with everything in really helps. I think having intentionally purchased drink bottles that don't have too many replaceable parts can really help. I think thinking through what works best for your child, how can they access it is also another thing to think about. Um, and, you know, you might you might say, actually, we're just going to go with one drink bottle per person. And we acknowledge as a family that we may have to replace it once a month because it gets lost or it gets broken. I want to encourage you to think about what's going to work best for you with drink bottles. I initially thought I would do drink bottles on lunch boxes in one episode and then realized that was over ambitious. So in two days time, I'm going to drop back into your feed and talk to you all about lunch boxes, tell you some kind of gross stories of things that I found in lunch boxes when I'm working with clients. A thank you to Jackie for helping me um, think about some different things to share with you for today's episode around drink bottles as a teacher and a professional organiser. Um, she was a great person to get some ideas from. Make sure you jump over into my Facebook community. We would love to see you over there, connect with other like-minded declutterers be inspired to get rid of things that are no longer serving you and let today be the day those drink bottles that are manky and broken and missing pieces time for them to head into the rubbish bin so that you can start the year really easily being able to find exactly what you need when you need it all right i will see you in a couple of days i hope that you have an amazing rest of your day and enjoy the freedom I would like to acknowledge the Wurundjeri people who are the traditional custodians of the land this podcast is recorded on. I would also like to pay respects to their elders, both past and present of the Kulin Nation, and extend that respect to other Indigenous Australians. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you enjoyed today's episode, I would love you to rate and review the show on your podcast app. That will help others to find the Art of Decluttering podcast as well. If you'd like any more information, you can visit theartofdecluttering.com.au and I would love to see you in my Facebook group. Just search The Art of Decluttering Community on Facebook and join today. I hope that you have an incredible rest of your day and enjoy the freedom.